All right. So everybody, thank you um, for looking at my weirdness. Uh, so if you don't yet know what your human design is, feel free. Um, if yes, type in the chat. And if not, go to humandesignamerica.com to see your uh, chart because it'll give you a sense of what is uh, here and what your what your design is. So um, looks like someone typed in the chat. Uh, Kelsey said, can't wait to hear from Vanessa again. Just set up my Tiltify account this week for an upcoming Twitch event. That's so cool. Oh, thank you, Brenda. Weirdness and all. Yep. This is the, this is sort of what, you know, patriarchy doesn't want us to acknowledge the stuff that doesn't necessarily make logical sense. And this doesn't make logical sense at all. So in the human design system, I am a 3-5 man manifesting generator, cross of planning. This is so weird. Keep with me here. So um, if you want a free 30 minute reading, I'm happy to give you one. If you go to bit.ly slash human design intro, um, I'm very happy to share that. Uh, so if you want to just get a sense of what your chart looks like, go to humandesignamerica.com. Even if you're born in another country, it's okay. And just put in your uh, date of birth, time, and place, and you'll be able to see your chart. And uh, I'm going to put in the chat this link so that you have it. So um, here's the link, Human Design America. There you go. So um, has anybody here ever gotten a human design reading? Or have you ever heard of human design? Just put Y or N in the chat. And if you do have N, okay, Y, Brenda, Andrea, Patty, wow. Yes, well, Patty, I know you have. I gave you one. <laughs> you just heard about it last week. Deva, excellent. Yes, Katura, my last training. Yes, yes, I love it. Um, Allison said, and so for those of you who have had this, who know about it, this is great. Um, do you have initial questions or things you want to share? Or if this is all new to you, just want to like know everything. And then, you know, let's see. Um, feel free to type in your questions or unmute yourself and say your question. Um, I'm excited to hear if you just pulled mine. 2-4 manifesting generator. Nice. And Martin. Okay, great. Wonderful. Um, so yeah, I'm not going to give you a full rundown on the human design system today because I just did that and Katura, you were there um, for that. So I'm just going to focus on the gene keys. And so human design is kind of like, I guess you could say high school and the gene keys are kind of like grad school. They're very, very complicated um, and they're based on the human design system. So I'm going to share more with you about what that is, but this is what you'll learn today. Um, how you can know you're using your true gifts with the Gene Keys Pearl sequence and how to find the gifts hidden in your shadow and the highest expression of those gifts. And so um, if you know your human design chart, these are the top four numbers at the top of your chart. So it's your life's work, your evolution, your radiance, and your purpose. It's also called the activation sequence. And um, there's other charts in here. There's the love, um, the love sequence, as well as the pearl sequence, which is the prosperity sequence that we'll be talking about a little bit too. So this is called the Golden Path, and um, it's this was a book written by um, a guy named Richard Rudd. He wrote it over ten years, and it is like one of my favorite books in the whole world. So. It's helping you find the gift in your so-called negative aspects. And I feel like anything that helps us know ourselves better can help us get free. Um, and so the first one is the activation sequence. That's the most important one to understand. The next, as I said, the Venus sequence, which is about courageous emotional opening through relationships. And then finally, the Pearl sequence, which is you know partially, this is the same one right here. Um, it guides you towards true prosperity by helping you find your core vocation. So for some of us who are like, I don't know if the sector is still for me, or what could I do instead, or which direction should I go, this can be really helpful. And it supports you to find the highest possible form of service you can offer to the world through your inherent gifts. 
So that's what the Perl sequence is, which is pretty fun, but you really have to go through the activation sequence first. So, um, so this is how you find out what these numbers are. So this is mine. Um, so these are your four prime gifts that help you love your life more and find the work that's most fulfilling for you, your true values, your true self, your purpose. So um, these two right here. So if you go to Human Design America, you'll see a chart like this for yourself. And these are the numbers that would be making sense for you. So 40 and 37, 16 and nine are the ones for me, but yours will be different. So it will probably be different, I'll just say. So this is what's called your life work, this number here. Then this one's your evolution, this one's your radiance, and this one is your purpose. Um, and so in between these, you see you go from life's work to evolution, and there's a challenge. And then from evolution to radiance, you have a breakthrough. And then finally, you have what's called your core stability, moving from your radiance to your purpose. So you'll see here there's these little tiny um, words underneath um, the word life work. So for me, the, this is gate 40 in human design. And so gate 40's uh, shadow is exhaustion. The gift is resolve. And the highest expression or the city is called divine will. So um, gate 40 is also right here in the chart. And um, yeah, I wish I had other people's charts here. I could just start telling you about yourself and see if it's true or not. Um, so how does it uncover your deeper self? Um, the red is the shadow side of what you do. And so if we were having a reading together, I'd ask you, if this was your chart, do you work yourself into exhaustion? Do you have trouble asking for help and get isolated? Does that make you feel weak? Um, do you try to ignore your problems? Do you get stuck in a rut? And you might be like, Mazarin, yes, this is true for me. Oh my God, but this isn't my chart. Why isn't this also true for me if it's not my chart? Be like, well, you know, it's just like maybe more core themes for myself. But even if you're resonating with this, that's great. Um, you might have one or two of these numbers. It's hard to say, there's 64 of them. So um, this is the human design chart with um, different numbers. And here, just in case you've never seen this before, I know some of us haven't, um, you'll see it combines astrology uh, the chakra system with nine centered being instead of a seven centered being and the I Ching. And the I Ching are all these little numbers here. So there's 64 gates and each one of them will be different. So um, I will show you that uh, this doesn't have to ring true for you. It's just another way to know yourself. Um, and depending on if you have a gate uh, filled in or not, filled in, you'll have a line that will make a center uh, look defined or undefined. And there's different things I could tell you about that. But ultimately, for the gene keys, it doesn't really matter as much um, because it's all about these numbers and how you can come to acceptance of your shadow to explore your gift. So for me, I had a year where I just said, I'm exhausted, I'm exhausted, I'm exhausted over and over and over again. And um, it was, uh, wow, like when I read that, I was like, this is so true for me. <laughs> um, and then I definitely was isolated when I was saying I was exhausted. Um, and sometimes I definitely do try to ignore my problems. Um, I'm not gonna tell you how right now because it's embarrassing, but let's just suffice to say, yeah, I've been an ostrich before and I definitely do have that inertia. Like if I stopped meditating, it's hard to start again. If I've stopped going out to walk or bike, it's hard to start. Um, so I do get that stuck in a rut thing. On the other hand, um, when I come out of that rut, I get in a groove and I stay in that groove. And so that's how I've been able to do my business for the last 10 years is just stay in my groove. Um, and so this, you know, how does this uncover your entrepreneurial type? Well, um, you might you might notice what you can help other people with um, as you look at this. So resolve is there. And um, I have resolve as long as I rest enough. That's what knowing your shadow can give you. I have, you know, I love equality, receiving as well as giving. And for me, equality is sexy. So um, that also shows you that I'm interested in, in offering that to others. Um, that's one of the reasons that I'm really passionate, why I started my podcast, why I, you know, continue to do these conferences, um, because I'm really passionate about equality. And then um, 
I'm versatile. After I step out of indifference, I can learn how to do anything. People want to, you know, learn how to do things, learn how to be versatile, learn how to have more resolve or care about equity or equality. These are things I can help them with. And then if they need more determination, I can definitely help them get there. So um, once I step out of my rut, I am determined because now I'm in a new rut and it's a productive rut. So that's how accepting my, um, my shadow allows me to express my gift. Um, does anybody have any questions so far? Is anybody interested in what their shadow or their gift could be? Um, feel free to type in the chat. Excellent. Let's see here. Want to learn more? Suzanne, yeah. Yeah, David, this is pretty involved. I mean, you could look at Myers Briggs, you could look at the Strengths Finder. I really like the Strengths Finder. I don't really like Myers Briggs, but whatever. You don't have to. You know, every single personality typing system in the whole world. But this kind of, for me, yeah, yeah, it's not accurate. Absolutely, Maureen. I will, I'll be happy to tell you more. Yeah, Strengths Finder is good. CBI is great. Yep. And this really, I think, goes to the core of, and it's even a little bit more spiritual. Um, so for me, like, when I work with folks, I love sharing this aspect of themselves with them so that they can start to understand what they could be here to do and what would give them the most joy and fulfillment, um, what most satisfaction could be in their life. And so um, when you see that there's like a kind of a happy ending at the end of the rainbow, that's what this really is. Like, wow, I could align my will to divine will if I wanted to. It's the highest expression of what I can do. I have a tenderness that can move mountains. You'd be like, Nazarene, why? Is tenderness something that's strong? Well, it just is, you know, like um, learning how to be tender is so powerful. Um, if anybody here has ever sat with somebody who is dying, um, you know that um, tenderness is extremely powerful. Um, mastery. So once I master one thing, I can have mastery over many things. So knowing that if I come out of my indifference, if I come out of my weakness, if I come out of my exhaustion, I can eventually have access to these things, mastery, tenderness, invincibility. That's like, yes, it's powerful and important to be tender. Suzanne, absolutely. It really is. And when you focus your determination, you are invincible. Um, and so that's something else that uh, I learned um, through looking at my gene keys. And that makes me feel good when sometimes... It's hard to feel good during quarantine. We don't have as much energy when you feel like, you know, life sucks when, you know, so many people have died and we've got the world's on fire and, you know, we have a lot of inequity that's being acknowledged, but we still don't have justice. Um, that is uh, what, this is what helps me to get through it personally, is looking at this. Um, so this is what's called the city or the highest uh expression of your gift but you have to look at your shadow before you can move into your gift and maybe this will be telling you things you already know about yourself this is just my chart again it's not your chart your chart will say something completely different but what i do is there's like chapters on each one of these numbers and i synthesize the chapters into something that's tailored for you when we talk about it um so the pearl sequence is the key to your prosperity so it is um, uh, four numbers in the gene keys that are your, uh, your unconscious uh, Jupiter and your conscious Jupiter, for example. So and it also incorporates your conscious sun here too and your unconscious Mars, which is like your passion. So introducing, understanding, and contemplating. So first it's your vocation. Um, for me, uh, it is intolerance, understanding, and forgiveness, and it may be that um, my vocation is to help people become more tolerant of each other, which would be pretty awesome, and to feel like the highest expression is forgiveness. I feel like it's about forgiving others as well as forgiving yourself for not measuring up to whatever you had in that moment, and so um, this moment, this place, this time, I feel like helps us start to understand each other if we're willing to. 
Um, so my vocation asks, what am I truly here to influence and how can I take initiative? And this is for me, this will not be the same for you. Um, yours will be different. And from vocation, we go to um, thinking about how does that make you money? Um, I excel at you know, bringing people together and content on how to understand others, motivation, values, and communication skills. Um, so then we move from vocation with initiative to culture. So what is your culture? This is something you can help others with. What is a way that you grow? So I can help people move from stress to restraint to stillness. And you might think, well, stillness, what kind of a highest expression is that? Why is restraint a gift, Mazarine? And like, it took me a while to figure this out too. But then I realized that, you know, if I'm always constantly working myself to exhaustion, stress is really going to be a big part of my life. And I can choose to have restraint about the things that I think about and the things that I do to not be stressed out, to not exhaust myself, and to make those boundaries that can help me come to stillness and sit in my power. Um, and so this is how understanding my culture makes me money. It's what I need to do is support my own growth as a person. It's coming to stillness. It's meditation. It's quiet. It's silence. Um, and oftentimes I really, as an extrovert, resist that, but it is something that has sustained me for two years now, just a consistent meditation practice, even for five minutes a day, um, has really, really worked. So what about brand? It may not be the traditional kind of brand that you think of, um, like, a, like a Nike or whatever. It's your brand is the story you tell and how you've overcome your shadow and how do you serve through your brand. So um, if you're wondering, you know, and we don't necessarily have to talk about branding yourself, but maybe just like thinking about what do I bring to the world? Um, I can definitely help people who have been exhausted find the resolve to get in a groove that works for them. And so from culture, you go to growth. So um, it's something I use to understand the need for full rest that can allow me to feel full resolve around my goals. So this is like me taking like pages and pages of pages and synthesizing them into one sentence for you. Like there's so much more I could tell you about this, but I'm not because this is my chart, not your chart. Um, and if you wanted to do, you know, a quick session together, I'd be happy to, to explore this with you a little more. It's hard to go quickly with this, but we could start with one or two of these for you. And then um, finally, the pearl, which is in the center. Um, this is how the heart of how you affect others. So for me, it's distraction, enrichment, and intoxication. And how I've learned about that, it's that what helps keep people's attention is jokes. Distraction brings enrichment. So I love making jokes with people. Like my presentations generally have jokes in them. I actually have a whole bunch of jokes I haven't even shown you yet for this conference. We just keep getting, you know, sidetracked. And I just never show them to you. But yeah, they're there. I have them in my newsletter every week. And that can distract people, but can also enrich their lives because life is hard enough when we talk about the hard things to not also have fun and laugh and have joy together. And that's also why I wanted to have dance this week. And that's also why I wanted to remind us, you know, life outside of work is so enriching and fulfilling. And that can lead to sort of like divine intoxication, like being a sort of a cosmic drunk, you know, just being like, wow, life is so incredible. I just want to spend each moment in full rapture about the sunlight on my face or the, the flowers that are coming up now or you know, the joy that comes with acknowledging our humanity, our shared humanity, and how we're all connected. Um, so that's some of what I take from this. And you might be like, okay, cool, Mazarin, but like, how does this really translate to prosperity, to making money? And I've been trying to share that with you. I hope you got it. Um, if not, that's okay. Um, but uh, Essentially, what it helps me do is understand how I can take my gifts and give them to the world in a way that is the highest expression of who I am. So whether it's distracting people and enriching their lives, whether it's helping them take a pause and have better boundaries, whether it's giving them the gift of resolve by showing them how I've had my own resolve and then helping them find theirs, um, moving from intolerance to understanding, um, 
I still feel like I'm on this journey. Like I have so many days where I'm like, wow, that was a really ableist thing for me to say. That was a really thoughtless thing for me to say. How could I say that? You know, how could I do that? Um, but you have to come back to self-forgiveness. And one of the things that I want to remind you um, just in this moment, you know, right here is that what patriarchy tells us is that we have to be perfect and we're not allowed to make a mistake. And you are, you are absolutely allowed to make a mistake. And what if you couldn't make a mistake? What if, what if, right? Yes, Suzanne, absolutely. Email me if you want a chart time with me. Absolutely. And I have a link as well. But yeah, just feel free to email me. Um, I'll type my email in the chat and you can just email me whenever and we can talk about you. I love talking about you. I love learning about you. So um, here's what some people have said about readings with me. Um, Marion said, um, if you want to learn about yourself, your business, understand others at a deeper level, you should come to me. Um, Randy, since having a session with me, has actually become a human design reader and coach. Um, so uh, she's really taken it to the limit. And I just love that this has spoken to her so much that she's gone to the next stage with it. Um, she said she had a stronger session idea of what she could offer as an entrepreneur. And one of the things I told her was that she uh, was so good at starting and finishing things and she can help people start and finish things. And she's just like, oh my God, that's so true. And that's a huge gift to be able to give to a client or an organization. Um, and Raisa also mentioned that she loved getting direction and learning deeper parts of herself. So sometimes what I do is I say, like, I can give you a one-off reading or I can give you more than one. Um, but uh, I use human design. I use sometimes the Strengths Finder or the Destiny cards to help you understand yourself. Um, so I just want to say, you know, this is a very short presentation, but let me give you time for the next session too. I just wanted to say thank you for coming. Um, I really, really appreciate you listening to this. And um, if you do want to have a free 30 minute session with me, I'm really happy to offer that to you. And I'll put that in the chat as well. This link right here, the capitalization is important. Um, so uh, I'll put this in. I don't think you have to capitalize Bitly, but you have to capitalize human design. So um, I think that's how you spell it. I'll double check that. Yeah. So yeah, check that out if you want to just book one. And um, yeah, like I'd love to help you learn more about you. So anyway, thanks everybody. Does anybody have any questions? So far so good? All right. Not yet anyway, very cool. All right. Um, I wanna give you some time to step away from your computer, eat, relax, stretch, hydrate. Um, please feel free to just do what you need to do. I'm gonna stop recording.